of the government. For the, for the third arm of government, I nominate Honorable Kenneth Marendi as the Speaker of the Senate. I further nominate Honorable Wycliffe Ambassador Paranya as the Chief uh, as the Cabinet Secretary for the National Treasury. Yeah. Honorable Peter Munya as Cabinet Secretary for Agriculture and Chairman of the Kenya Productive Sector. I repeat, Cabinet Secretary for Agriculture and Chairman of Kenya Productive Sector. And Honorable Ali Hassan Joho as Cabinet Secretary for Lands to deal with the historical... to deal with the historical land injustices in the coast region and within the borders of the Republic of Kenya once and for all. The public servants I have nominated above need no introduction. Their commitment to Kenya to change efficiency and their energy speak for itself. But to achieve my aspirations as president on behalf of the millions of our people, the Constitution requires me to have a helper. For Moses to lead the Israelites to Canaan, he needed Joshua. When Moses could not go to, to battle, Joshua covered up for him. When the arms of Moses got tired in combat, Joshua swiftly moved into, into action to cover the gaps. For Moses to accomplish his mission, he needed a true and faithful Joshua by his side. And for me to be a successful flag bearer for Azimio Laumoja, I need an effective Joshua on my side. One who will not be a turncoat in the middle of the battle or abandoned post for other exploits. I need a team player with fidelity to Project Kenya. After a long search, accompanied by much reflection and consultation, we have finally arrived at a person fit to occupy the office of Joshua in our republic. But before I mention this person, I want to draw a distinction between the office of the deputy president and the person of the Deputy President. Hello. According to our Constitution, the Office of the Deputy President is meant to be the President's workshop. It is meant to be the Principal Assistant's Office meaning that all the heavy lifting is expected to occur here. Like Joshua in the Bible, the principal assistant is meant to be a problem solver to the president, and not a problem to the president. This office is meant to lighten the burden of the president and to ease the yoke he carries. It is meant to be a workshop where ideas are tested and innovations are incubated. It is also the president's last line of defense administratively. If office of the deputy president is a workshop, the person who holds this office must bear certain characteristics. This person can, cannot be a competitor to the president. They have to complement the president. The person has to be a co-worker and a co-creator with the president. And following intense consultations, we have decided 
that the holder of this office has to be a woman. Hello? I will continue. After 60 years of independence, we cannot be the male domination. We cannot excuse the male domination of the executive. For the first time in the history of our republic and on the seventh multi-party election, History is calling us to close the gender gap in our country. History is calling us to reciprocate the struggles and fidelity of our women. History is calling on us to produce our first woman deputy president. Hello. Tafadali, 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 Kimia. Tafadali, Tafadali, Tafadali. Tafadali, Vijana. Vijana, hoi. Mamama, hi. Tulendolea. And I now want to describe to you the person. At the age of 24, at the age of 24, this woman was appointed a magistrate to adjudicate on matters of men. A few years later, she became the youngest woman to be elected a member of parliament in central Kenya. And she went on to serve in the capacity of, for 20 years. Of these 20 years, she was a cabinet minister for six years, serving in different portfolios. The 